Hi, time for the last module of week 12. And uh, this is just a continuation of the last module. Um, so how to find optimal shapes. So this is a problem of optimization. It's a problem of fi finding global minimums and global maximums. It's actually the problem of finding a global uh, extreme. And we know how to do that. We find the local e extremes. Um, if the interval, if the domain is a finite closed interval, then we just have to look at the endpoints and the critical points. Uh, the one with the most is the global max. The one with the least value is the global minimum. And uh, if we're given not a finite closed interval, then we've got to look at the graph and got to figure out, argue um, how to. Um, whether the, the point that we found is a maximum or a minimum. Okay, and just remind you, here's how we find local extreme values. Uh, we have to determine the function, the domain of the function, its endpoints. We have to find the derivative, find the roots of the derivative, find any points where the derivative is undefined. Uh, then when we've got the critical point, we have to look at it either by looking at its graph or seeing how the sign changes or by looking at the second derivative, uh, figuring out whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so let's look at a particular problem. So this is the problem of finding an optimal field. So uh, we want to uh, pen in a, a rectangular uh, plot by a river, it's a straight river, and we've got L feet of fencing, and the idea is how do we do it so that we enclose as great an area as possible. So that's the, what I mean by optimal, biggest. Okay, so first, all these problems are kind of the same. We choose variables. So let um, A be the area and X and Y the sides. And the relationship to optimize is A equals X times Y. Now the trouble is this has got two things in, it's a function of two things. And so our methods are only, we can only have one variable. But we have a constraint, right? We've got L feet of fencing and that L equals two X plus Y. That's the total amount of fence. So we can solve for Y, we get Y equals L minus two X. And so now we have a function to optimize x times l minus 2x. And to optimize that, we just use what we've learnt. Okay, so for, uh, for the domain, we know x and y cannot be negative. So x has to be greater or equal to 0. But y also has to be greater than or equal to 0. And since y equals l minus uh, 2x, that means x can't be any bigger than L on two, because if it was bigger than L on two, then y would be negative. Okay, so we take the derivative, uh, that's L minus four x, and the critical point is when x equals L on four, and L on four is the maximum, and that gives us the maximum area of L squared on eight. Um, and if x is L on four, y is l on two. So there's a couple of ways that we can see it's a maximum. One is you know, we've only got zero l on four, l on two, and l on four, it's the biggest value. We can have a look at the graph. We look at the graph there and we see that the, it's a maximum at l on four. Um, we can take um, the second derivative, right? So um, the second derivative is minus four. So again, that tells us it's a maximum. So there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, to use some sort of graphical aid, you actually you need actual numbers. You can't actually work with L. So let's go and, and check uh, Excel using um, L equals 100. Okay, uh, here's an Excel file. It's the min-max file that I've edited for this different pro particular problem. So if you click on it, you see it's 100x minus 2x squared. And there's the graph. We see it's at the midway point. So if L is uh, 
x is 25, that's uh, 100 divided by 4, so we can go and we can find 25, we see that it is the maximum. Okay, so that confirms that. Next problem. Okay, here's another optimal field problem. Same problem as before, but let's say we don't have the river. So again, we have the area A and sides X and Y. Uh, the relationship to optimize is still A equals XY, but now the constraint is L equals 2X plus 2Y. Um, so we get a different constraint, Y equals L2 minus X. We get a slightly different function, uh, X times L on two minus X. Um, we do the same kind of thing. Um, uh, we do the domain, it's between zero and L on two. You take the derivative and it's L on two minus two X. So X equals L on four is still the solution. Um, and the maximum area now is L squared divided by 16. Uh, because um, if X is L on four, Y is L on four too. Okay, so let's just check that with the Excel file again. Okay, so here's the Excel file. I'm gonna change it to 50X minus X squared. Hang on, did I do that right? Yep, and now I copy and paste. And I go and have a look. Aha, uh -huh. I'm seeing in the middle, I'm seeing my maximum again. Uh, so again, I want to go to 25. And again, I'm seeing the maximum. So this is working out good. Okay, another problem. Uh, let's find an optimal volume this time in a box. So we have an open storage box with a square base and vertical sides, but no top. It has to be constructed uh, from a square feet of material. So what is the dimensions? Okay, so this time we'll let V be the volume, X be the side of the square base, and H the height of the box. So the relationship to optimize is V equals X squared H. And the constraint is that the area has to be, we've got a fixed area. So the area is the area of the base, which is X squared, and there's four sides X by H. So H equals A divided by four X minus X divided by four. And so we plug that in and we get a cubic equation this time. Okay, so we optimize by taking the derivative and we set that equal to zero. That's going to be zero when uh, 3x squared equals a. So we can solve for x. That's the uh, square root of a divided by three. And we plug that back into the constraint equation. We'll get that the height has to be square root of 3a divided by six. And that gives us the, the, the volume. Okay, so let's check that again. Uh, with the Excel file. Okay, so our equation is going to be um, 75, that's 300 divided by 4 times x minus um, x cubed uh, divided by 4. And I'm going to copy and paste that. Ha, huh. okay. Um, so we see my thing is way too big. Um, so I can make my um, step size smaller. So let's make it 0.02. Okay, 
so it fits more onto the screen there. And so we see that our we do have a maximum, and it's uh, around uh, ten. So let's have a look if that's true. Uh, oh, there's, it's actually exactly at 10. Good. And does that make sense? Um, let's go back to our problem. Okay, so we found that the optimal x was 10 when a was 300. 300 divided by 3 is 100. Square root of it is 10. But great, we're doing good. Okay, so using a calculator or, or some sort of graphical device is a great way to double check that you're doing the right thing. Um, so here is another a different question, minimizing costs this time. So instead of maximizing something, we're going to minimize something. So we know that the cost of fuel in dollars per hour to power a boat through water is proportional to the cube of the speed. A boat uses $100 of fuel per hour when cruising at 10 miles per hour. Apart from fuel, the cost of running the ferry is $625 per hour. That's things like labor, uh, whatever you need to run a boat. At what speed should the ferry run to minimize the cost per mile? Okay, first thing we've got to figure out is how much it costs to use full fuel. So we know it's $100 when we're cruising at 10 miles per hour, 10 cubed is 1,000. So 100 equals K times 1,000, so K equals 0.1. So that's that constant of proportionality. So the cost per hour is um, 0.1 times S cubed plus 625, where S is the speed. But we don't want cost per hour, we want cost per mile. Uh, well, but if we've got cost divided by hour and we multiply by hour divided by miles, okay, then yeah, we want cost per mile. So we take cost per hour and we multiply by hour per mile. And that's the same thing as taking cost per hour and dividing by S. Okay, so now we've got um, our equation for C, the thing that we want to minimize. Um, the C equals 0.1 S squared. So we divide by S, remember, plus 625 divided by S. Take the derivative, down comes the 2, 0.2 S minus, it's minus because remember it's S to the minus 1. So down comes the minus 1, we subtract 1 from the power. And that's going to equal 0 when S cubed equals 625 divided by 0.2 which is uh, around 14.62 miles per hour. Okay, and so your module question for this is, why is this a minimum? Because, uh, you know, we didn't check with, to see whether it was a maximum or minimum, but it is the minimum. And the hint there is just look at the situation. You know, what happens is S goes, as the boat goes really s slow or the boat goes really fast? Why does this have to be? A minimum. Here's the last question. Um, I thought I'd do this on the whiteboard. So um, here's another biology question. So uh, crows like shellfish and to open a shellfish what they'll do is they'll fly up in the air and drop them onto a rock. Um, and if the shell doesn't smash, it will just keep on going up again and again. They're very smart, actually, about it. Now, the average number of drops needed uh, when the whelk is dropped from x meters is approximately uh, 1 plus 27 divided by x squared. Um, so let's figure out what height they should drop from to minimize the total distance that they have to travel upwards. Okay, if you think about it, right, if they uh, drop it from one meter high, we plug it into the equation, 
uh, 1 plus 27 divided by 1 is 28. So I have to fly up 28 times. 28 times 1 meter is 28 meters. Whereas if they go up 3 meters, right, 3 squared is 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 times 3 meters is 12 meters. Okay, so it's better for them to go up only 3 meters than it is to go up 1 meter. Okay, so let's do this on the whiteboard. Okay, so the total distance that they're going to travel then is going to be x times the number of times they go up x meters, which is going to be x times 1 plus 27 divided by x squared, the formula given to you, which is x plus 27 divided by x. Okay, so we take the derivative of this is 1 minus 27 on x squared. And that's going to equal 0 when uh, x squared is um, 27. So x should be the square root of 27. And that turns out to be, it's like, uh, what's that approximately? It's just five and a little bit. Okay, and so that's how high they should go up, right? Because when they do that, uh, it's roughly going to take them twice, two, two, maybe three trips to do, to do it. Uh, and that's going to only, they're only going to be traveled like 10 meters. Okay, and that finishes uh, this week. I hope you have a good weekend, everybody.